The Saab Gripen E is hailed as the ultimate single-engine fighter of its generation. Agile, smart, and a nightmare for enemies in electronic warfare. But this jet, built for independence, has a critical weakness. A critical Achilles heel that ties it directly to the military policies of a foreign power. That weakness is its engine, the American-made General Electric F-414G. But what if one of the world's most famous European aerospace companies, Rolls-Royce, stepped in? What if the Gripen E-F got a brand new unexpected power plant? This isn't just a technical upgrade, it's a geopolitical revolution, and it could fundamentally redefine the future of the Gripen. To understand why this is a massive story, we first have to look at the current setup. The Gripen E is a beast, thanks to the General Electric F414G turbofan. This is the same engine family that powers the American Super Hornet, giving the Gripen 25% more thrust than its C slash D predecessor. It allows for impressive performance, including Super Cruise at Mach 1.1. But a fighter jet is more than just its airframe. Around 30% of the Gripen e fs components are manufactured in the United States, and the engine is the biggest, most critical piece. This introduces the infamous ITAR restriction. ITAR stands for International Traffic in Arms Regulations. It means the U.S. government has the legal right to veto the export of the Gripen to any nation if they don't approve of the customer, and they have done it. The most famous case? Colombia. The block sale to Colombia in favor of the, the EJ-230 is a proposed derivative of the Eurojet EJ-200 engine that powers the Eurofighter Typhoon. Since Rolls-Royce is a key partner in the Eurojet consortium, this would make it a Rolls-Royce engine in a general sense. The game changer integrating a European-made engine like the EJ-230 would make the Gripen E-F completely ITAR-free significantly enhancing its global export appeal and opening new markets by removing the U.S. veto risk. In summary, the new Rolls-Royce engine is not the current operational engine, but rather a potentially revolutionary non-U.S. power plant being explored to make the Gripen E-F a truly independent, high-performance option on the global market. Competing F-16 was a global wake-up call. For a nation like Sweden, whose defense industry is built on the promise of security of supply and autonomy, this foreign veto power is simply unacceptable. The challenge is clear. How do you keep the Grapen's phenomenal performance while ripping out its most valuable and most vulnerable component? The answer, as the rumors suggest, involves the United Kingdom's greatest aerospace name. The proposed solution is a clean-sheet European engine known as the Eurojet EJ-230. While Eurojet is a consortium, a major driving force behind the technology is Rolls-Royce. The EJ-230 is an advanced derivative of the proven EJ-200 engine that powers the mighty Eurofighter Typhoon. But the EJ-230 is more than just a bigger EJ-200. It's designed to be a plug-and-play module for the Grapen E-F. It is a strategic masterstroke. Saab gets to offer a faster, more powerful product while its customers get total security of supply. They control their own spare parts, maintenance, and future software upgrades, a core philosophy Saab has built its reputation on. This is a huge jump in power for an already agile airframe. Imagine the acceleration, the climb rate, the ability to maintain super crews at even higher Mach numbers with a full combat loadout. The block sale to Columbia in favor of the competing F-16 was a global wake-up call. For a nation like Sweden, whose defense industry is built on the promise of security of supply and autonomy, this foreign veto power is simply unacceptable. The EJ-230 is an advanced derivative of the proven EJ-200 engine that powers the mighty Eurofighter Typhoon. But the EJ-230 is more than just a bigger EJ-200. It's designed to be a plug-and-play module for the Gripen E-F. Let's talk numbers, and this is where the upgrade part of our title comes in. The current F414G delivers around 98 kilonewtons of thrust. The proposed EJ230 is reported to be in the 102 to 120 kilonewton thrust class. This is a huge jump in power for an already agile airframe. Imagine the acceleration, the climb rate, 
the ability to maintain super crews at even higher Mach numbers with a full combat loadout. Furthermore, the EJ200 family is known for its lower fuel consumption. This means the Rolls-Royce derived power plant could extend the Gripen's combat radius by 5 to 10 percent, making it an even more potent asset in vast operational areas. And here's the unexpected twist. The original EJ200 program had a planned upgrade for a thrust vectoring nozzle. If this technology is integrated into the EJ230, the Gripen E would suddenly gain a level of low-speed maneuverability that would be utterly unheard of for its class. That is an upgrade the world truly didn't expect. The real driving force behind this potential engine swap is sovereignty. For Saab and for its customers, the desire is to have a world-class fighter jet that is completely free of U.S. export strings. An ITAR free grip in E is a sales department's dream. Countries that are politically cautious or geographically distant from the U.S. will suddenly have a premium, proven 4.5 generation fighter that they can operate and upgrade without fear of a future geopolitical veto. Think about Canada, which needs to replace its aging fleet. If the Gripen could offer local, licensed production of the engine, as the Rolls-Royce partnership might allow, it becomes a significantly more attractive option than the F-35. It is a strategic masterstroke. Saab gets to offer a faster, more powerful product, while its customers get total security of supply. They control their own spare parts, maintenance, and future software upgrades, a core philosophy Saab has built its reputation on. This move also directly challenges the narrative pushed by fifth-generation aircraft like the F-35. The Gripen E's core strengths are its revolutionary electronic warfare suite and its unmatched modularity. The EJ-230 simply unlocks its full potential. The Gripen is built for dispersed operations, landing on short, austere runways. A more powerful, potentially more durable European engine simply makes the logistics of that high-intensity, decentralized warfare model even more robust. So if the EJ-230 is this game-changer, why is it still a hypothetical power-up and not a done deal? The answer is simple. Money, time, and risk. Switching a fighter jet engine is not like changing the battery in your car. It requires a massive and expensive redesign of the airframe. The intakes, the wiring, the cooling systems, the connection points, they are all optimized for the GEF-414G. The costs would run into the hundreds of millions, if not billions, to take the EJ-230 from a prototype to a flight-qualified production engine integrated into the Gripen. Who pays for that? Sweden? A new export customer? The cost-benefit analysis is tough, especially for an aircraft that already has a successful, proven engine. Finally, there's the risk. The F414G is a known quantity, reliable, powerful, and flight-tested in the Gripen E. The EJ-230 integration would require years of new flight testing, certification, and proving its reliability in a completely new airframe configuration. Sticking with the GE engine is the path of proven reliability. Switching to Rolls-Royce is the path of unprecedented strategic independence. The Rolls-Royce engine story is the single biggest question mark hanging over the Gripen E slash F program. It's a perfect microcosm of the modern defense landscape. Geopolitics versus performance. The Gripen E is a phenomenal fighter, agile, smart, and designed to fight a smart, networked war. But the debate over its engine is proof that even the most technically advanced platforms are never truly free from political entanglement. Whether it's the proven General Electric power plant or the potential European powerhouse, one thing is certain. The Gripen E slash F is a fighter built to adapt. And if the global market demands an ITAR free solution with the thrust of a Rolls Royce derivative, Saab has already shown it's willing to make the upgrade the world never saw coming. The debate over the Gripen EF's engine, whether to keep the proven GEF 414G or integrate the proposed Rolls Royce EJ 230, is the final frontier for this fighter. This is more than a technical swap, it's a strategic ultimatum. While the F414G offers reliable thrust and a flight tested platform, its American origin subjects the Gripen to ITAR restrictions, giving the US veto power over key export sales, as seen in the Columbia incident. The EJ230, 
potentially offering higher thrust in European manufacturing, promises to make the Gripen ITAR free, unlocking new global markets like Canada, Peru, or even Ukraine. This move would cement the Gripen status as a truly independent, sovereign defense platform, fulfilling Saab's core philosophy. The question remains, is Saab and its partners willing to accept the immense cost and risk of engine integration to secure complete strategic freedom? What do you think? Is the price of independence worth the gamble? What do you think? Should Saab take the billion-dollar gamble for full strategic independence? Or should they stick with the proven F414G? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more deep dives into the world's most advanced military technology.